Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called The Sex and the City. You need one and a half ounces of vodka, a half ounce of triple sec, a half ounce of cranberry juice, some freshly squeezed lime juice, ice, and a lemon wedge for garnish. So you're going to fill the cocktail shaker with ice, add all your liquids, shake well until the mixture is chilled, and strain into your cocktail glass. And that's a sex in the city because it's basically a cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. How was your week? And my week has been good. I feel like it's been a few weeks that we have been able to catch up. I am just, well, by the time this comes out, I won't be just getting back from the wedding. But today in real life, I'm just getting back from my girlfriend Carrie's wedding. Mm -hmm. and How was it? It was amazing. I love a wedding. You know, while we were there, it was in uh, New Jersey, on Diamond Beach, Diamond Beach, New Jersey, in Cape May, mm -hmm. like a very beachy town. Like a, it looked like a little city that was cut out of, I don't know, um, maybe like a Martha's Vineyard neighborhood <laughs> or something. I've never been to Martha's Vineyard, but all the little places are on the beach, and they all look the same in like New England style houses, almost like Hocus Pocus. Like all the neighborhoods look like Hocus Pocus. So me and some girlfriends, we all got an Airbnb, stayed together. The people who are engaged or have boyfriends brought their guys. And um, it was a lot of fun. Like, it was just a lot of fun. I was a little nervous because... Why? Uh, I get nervous when you're integrating, like, so many different types of personalities, mm. races. Like, I just get real nervous when I'm bringing, like, my significant other around. I'm with a, a baby Dr. Umar. <laughs> Um, so I was just like, he kept being like, I really never been around this many white people. Really? I, yes. Like, was not, everybody else white? No. And I was oh. like, everybody's not even white. He was like, but they're not black. So they're white. And I was like, <laughs> please stop. And I was like, he wasn't saying this in front of everybody. He was right. saying this before we went. And I, he was like, and then I told him at the last minute, we're all staying in the Airbnb. He was like. You did not tell him this ahead of time? Didn't. Did you think he was going to back out? I just wasn't <laughs> sure. And I was like. I just didn't, I, I was really stressed because I was like, I have a diverse group of people. And so I was like, I, I don't want him to be uncomfortable, but I don't want, these are really great people. Like you're going to have a good time. It was a good time. Like we definitely still were making our, our jokes, but um, mm -hmm. it was a good time. The wedding was beautiful. During the cocktail hour before the reception, uh, reception started, after the ceremony, I had asked everybody that I was sitting at the table with, like, what are y'all's thoughts when you're at a wedding? And I want to ask you too, like when you're you watching, mean? when you're at a wedding and you see the people take their vows, they do the kiss, the whole little 30 minute ceremony. What are your feelings that you feel? And do you I cry at weddings? Usually I do, especially if people write their own vows and add those in because it's just so personal. I usually just feel warm and bubbly inside and mm. I feel excited. And it's just beautiful to see love like that and to, to see two people who are willing to not only profess their love in front of all of these people and God, but to make these vows to each other. And to me, it's just the start of something beautiful. Fortunately, I haven't been to a wedding where I was like, oh, I don't think these two should be getting married. So it was always just so beautiful to me. And I usually cry. So do I. I normally cry or my eyes will get juicy. Like my eyes got mm -hmm. juicy on this one. I, did, I didn't I did cry. But um, a lot of the girls, like our eyes got juicy. And so we're going around and the women are saying like things like that. That's how I feel. And some women are like, sometimes I just, my eyes get juicy because I wonder, is this is this day ever going to happen for me? Everybody mm. was just sharing how they, what makes them want to cry. And because none of the guys, their eyes, no one's eyes got juicy. And so I what was What do like, you think? Or what goes through your mind in oh, these moments? There's a lot that goes through my mind. It's like, wow, this is beautiful again to like, y'all love Witness. each other. You are, all of these people came from around the world to watch you profess your love to one another. And it's just beautiful. Like, I hope you found the one. Sometimes you really don't know what's going on, but <laughs> it, that's how I feel too. It's and just, I feel special that they chose you to include you on this day. It's like you feel like a part of it. Yeah. And it's just- like we're rooting for 
are you? In a good way. Yeah. We're all for you. A lot of emotions are stirred up. Um, and so then we asked the guys, like, what do y'all be feeling? Because no, nope, y'all's eyes weren't juicy. And like, <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the guys are like, I think about how expensive this is. And I think about somebody really did say something that really was profound. Everybody was like, dang, that is a good thought. One of the men was like, I really think about he's like, I think this is beautiful, but I also look at it like it's so beautiful and so intimate and everybody did travel from near and far to come witness this and you guys are saying these amazing vows and heartfelt vows to each other and making these promises in front of us and God and there are some people that do this three and four times mm -hmm. like how do you know <laughs> that's not gonna be you and I was like you don't yeah, and you really that's don't the leap of faith that you take you it's a leap it's of not. faith. Yeah, yeah. Like the men were like, I'm trying to make sure like y'all are doing the work to make this worth it. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful conversation because it was like, you should be thinking about that. I hope when people are getting married, you have already thought about that. A lot of the times they haven't, but it was a great conversation. <laughs> Just wanted to share that the wedding was beautiful. Reception was beautiful. It was an open bar. Mm -hmm. All Those are the best. The be And I was like, it was normally when I've gone to weddings, it'll be like an open bar for that cocktail hour. But then when you get to the reception, maybe like an hour and then that's it. It was an open bar from uh -huh. 6 to 12 a.m. The Do white they have people. later snacks too? I've been noticing that at weddings. Like they have the dinner at the reception, but then like towards the end, they have like a late night snack. So there was during the cocktail hour, there was so much food, mm -hmm. so much food. And then obviously the dinner, there were snacks, but they were more like sweets. Mm, like not a like bunch a, of desserts. Yeah, a bunch of desserts. Not like a little, that's a good idea though. Little sliders, mm -hmm. little burgers. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it was beautiful to, to just have a, a weekend filled with love and yeah. it went well. Like my boyfriend did mesh there, but he still was like, wow, we're really with white people. And I was like, <laughs> he, said, he said, one of the things he said, we're laying in the bed. He was like, um, you really have white friends, like w real white friends. And I was like, are you new here? <laughs> Looking at him like, shut up. He was like, I don't hear anybody taking a shower at night. I was like, stop. <gasps> like, you need to stop. Like, this is not like, stop doing that. But um, uh, it was alarming. a lot of fun. <laughs> there are a lot of cultural differences between races, but I, they're beautiful and they are all welcomed in my bubble. Um, also, we didn't, did you do anything for Cinco de Mayo? I know we're so far removed from Cinco de Mayo, but we haven't had a chance to like catch up. Did you do anything special? Um, yeah. So I had a Quattro de Bayou, is what I'm going to call that? it. That's some shit I made up. Um, <laughs> Four so, is quattro, right? Yeah. Okay. So on the 4th of May, that Saturday, I had some girlfriends come over and I boiled some crawfish in my swamp bucket. Mm. Are you really making use of that? Because I don't like buying people presents and they don't use them. Oh, girl, I've been using that mm -hmm. thing. I tried to invite you over. You was you went to the wedding. Mm, I wouldn't need no crawfish. You wouldn't even I try can, it? I don't know. <laughs> you could try it. So one of my girlfriends, Elise, she had never had it before. She's from Cali. Um, she had never had it before, so she didn't eat many, but she did try it. She was open. Um, and then what else did I have? Some sausage, some boudin, corn, mm -hmm. potato. No, we didn't do corn, potatoes. But it was funny because um, Lex came over too, and Lex has been on this JoJo Siwa kick, and she kept talking about how we need to be is. in... JoJo Siwa is... Um, I think she was like on Disney Channel or Nickelodeon. I'm pretty sure it's Disney Channel. Like but, old Disney or new Disney? Uh, new word Disney, but she's okay. like grown now. Anyway, she's been doing this weird thing that I keep seeing on the internet and it's like this really weird dance. I don't know. I think that popped up on my timeline, Lex doing it. And it's, she's like snapping and yeah. like, mm -hmm. okay. So she was telling us, oh, we got to have rehearsals. We got to practice. And so we're like, whatever. It was just another girl's night. We're hanging out. We didn't have anything else to do. Mm -hmm. um, so while we're waiting on the swamp bucket to get to a boil and I was like, I got to show Elise every step of the way because she's never experienced this. She was so excited. So we're having rehearsal. Y'all, I thought I was going to have a concussion. So you were slinging your head around? Yes. And so me and Elise ended up bumping heads. It was like crack. It felt like in a cartoon where it's like kerplunk or some big sound. It was like that. It hurt. I had to go find some Tylenol. We took it. Were y'all um, crying? No, we didn't cry, but it really did hurt. Like we banged our heads because we were going full out on our dance moves. I didn't realize when Lex was recording it, it had like a filter on it with these WWE wrestling looking masks. Uh, not 
masks, but filters on her. It was just really funny and crazy. And uh, because it had that, people were like, is that Kiki? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's me. And they're like, are you okay? No, I wasn't okay. I think I just got back right. But I did that. Sink. We got so drunk. Um there was nothing mm -hmm. for Cinco de Mayo. All I did was walk Whitley. We and then Elise is like, y'all, I feel like being outside. And we were like, girl, lay down. You got a concussion. It was, first of all, I did what? have Cinco de Mayo plans. It was oh, it started did? storming, though, as soon as we got mm. to the, the festival. There was a Cinco de Mayo festival at, now nah, I was mad. I ain't gonna call the, I'm not gonna call the promoter out. But it was supposed to be at Atlantic Station. At the very last minute, they changed it to the underground. Wait a minute, what? Right, That's a big change. That is a big change. Like, aside from you promoting an event to be at one place and you changing it, that's on another part of town. That's on a whole With no was, fucking parking, for real. And then it started raining. But we, my girlfriend, Tierra, shout out to Tierra, she had a little get-together at her house before we went. It was another mm -hmm. little couple's thing. She was like, I want all the guys to meet each other before we mm -hmm. go out, because you know how niggas can be. And I was like, okay, yeah. So we all went to her place, and she had these cute welcome shots, like when everyone came in with drinks and little Spanish words on it. I wore a sombrero. Everybody was, like, dressed in little... It was really fun. We stayed there... Um, they played I'm Curious to Know. I was a little mm -hmm. late, so they had already played. And then we played some other game. We were going around asking questions. Everybody was getting to know each other. And then we got a little tipsy. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the festival. As soon as we got there, I'm talking about torrential downpour. What kind of festival was it? Black. It should have been called Black. It was just like Black a Cinco Cinco de, de Mayo. There wasn't a taco in sight. Not was a, it at least plenty of tequila? There was to. <gasps> it was... It was a lot of Jamaican food and what? rum. I was like, what is y'all doing? Like, I like when the stuff, mat there's a theme that matches what's going on. I know we're not really Mexican, but I want a taco and a margarita. It does. It, 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 it was just poorly planned. Like, oh, we could have did this at the house and it would have yeah. been more fun because you can get as drunk as you want. Because we had a blast. Yes. And, and I made a mean taco. Drunk? Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, you don't like tacos? No, I like tacos. I'm saying, mm mm, because why did they not have the tacos? Why did they I not feel have the tacos? That. Okay, yeah, like it was, it was interesting. So, but it, you know, it was a good time. Afterwards, um, I popped some high on love. I was handing them out to people and Ooh. everybody. I just love being thanked for the high on love because people be like, wow, this is really, it made me feel flirty. This is not an ad. It's not, but it made me feel flirty, and I had I I I've been having some good sex with my man. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and and it's also really good because I was feeling real self conscious because I haven't waxed since I haven't had. Remember when I told you I was gonna get a wax in Brazil and mm -hmm. I didn't because they didn't have the Brazilian. I haven't was had that a wax. not in February? I was in February. It is May, and I was like, let me see if he's really <laughs> down for me, and he is. Do you trim it? Sometimes I do go in the bathroom and trim it real quick. Okay, <laughs> it's hairy, but I just haven't, I just haven't like felt the need to do it. But I'm it like, is painful. It's painful. And when you let it go too long, it's even more painful. And now I'm just like, oh, for Fiji, I'm definitely gonna have to get it waxed. But he still mm. loves me, so that's good. Um, did you do anything for Mother's Day? So Mother's Day, no, I stayed here. I really wanted to um, go to Louisiana. And spend it out there. But I'm going at the end of the month for my grandmother's party. So I was like, I'll just wait. And mm -hmm. it seemed to be up in the air. And I was like, we really ain't going to be doing nothing. No way. I did want to see my grandma, but we just got on Zoom. Um, so I didn't do anything for Mother's Day. Me and Whitley spent the day together for Whitley. Dog Mom's Day. And um, I was a little disappointed because, you know, when there's little kids in the family, you remind them. Mother's Day is coming up. You make your mama something. Yeah. Nobody called Whitley or called me to check my Amazon wish list. I'm looking for packages. Didn't see nothing. So, you know, maybe next year. Um, I didn't get any gifts. Uh, and she was barking at me. She tried to bite me a couple of times. I don't know what that was about. Probably because she didn't like the food I gave her. But she's on a special diet still right now until her stomach gets back right. And she's upset about it. And I said, you know, I'm not sure that I didn't birth you because I, too, am a picky eater. And I get quite hangry. Uh, but that's what I did for Mother's Day and then called all of the women that I love in my life who have been mothers to me or mm -hmm. I like their kids, so I called them too. <laughs> you, know, you might be onto something with the dog mom celebrating. Like, we I might need we to should. have like a dog mom brunch next year for the people who, the women who are dog moms. I think moms. it would be fun. And I was just sitting there. It's like none of my, you were the only friend that I have in town with a dog. 
<laughs> and uh, you were gone and nobody else has a dog. And I was just like, well, I guess it's just me and you, girl. girl. And I was going to go to this thing. Um, I've signed up to all these lists for like dog social events. But I was so damn tired from the day before. We didn't make it. They had like a little contest. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't make it. But I enjoyed the time that we spent together playing, rolling around. Should have mm -hmm. gave her a bath. I didn't. Guess I'll do it tomorrow. But yeah, I did oh, that. Well, happy late dog Quattro Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Monday. Um, before we move on to Indecisive Diana, I want to remind everybody that I'm going to Iceland November 1st through the 6th. And mm. I, this has been on my bucket list, not Iceland, because I have been to Iceland, uh -huh. but I've never won, I've never seen the Northern Lights. Okay. And so when we're going, like we're going to see the no Northern Lights on a boat in the middle of the Norwegian Sea. Like, I, this is just like oh, romantic slash amazing. Like if you can bring your bae, bring your bae. If you're coming solo, come solo. If it's a birthday, come celebrate. Bring your girlfriends. Iceland, November 1st through the 6th. This is probably going to be one of my favorite adventures. I love cold places because mm. of the wildlife. And so mm. I'm just really excited to possibly see whales or wolves or, you know, whatever Iceland has for, for wildlife. Go to paradiseandvibe.com to sign up now. And I want to remind you guys to not only go to my YouTube channel and check out the new vlogs, I've been updating more content there, um, but also join the book club. This month we are reading this book called The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I'm almost finished with it. So update. The book is very scandalous. This woman has lived a life and it's like a new story every time she gets another husband, but it's not like, I thought she was killing all her husbands and that's why she had so many of them, but that's not what happened. But she really lived some shit. And now I'm trying to figure out is this based on anybody in Hollywood for real I don't know I mean it's fiction but it's really good I hope that you guys join the book club we're going to discuss it at the very end of the month well yeah at the very end of the month we'll discuss the book and we also do a mid-month happy hour that has probably passed by the time you hear this but it's not too late to join we read all sorts of books um, we typically do a poll every now and then I just pick a book but I want to encourage you guys to join it's nice to meet new people many people have met each other in real life it's, it's just a great way to meet new friends and do something social it's all virtual and um, it's a good time so join us. Just go to patreon.com slash Kiki said so. And also join our Patreon. We have been posting lots of content. Uh -huh. We've updated some stuff on the ride or die tier only. And then we have, you know, our weekly bonus episodes and everything. And we do our lives at the end of the month. So y'all go to patreon.com slash cocktails. Sign up. Join us. We have a good time with the patrons. We do have a good time with the patrons. Mm -hmm. I love y'all. They feel like our real friends. Mm -hmm. um, I was also going to shout out Megan. Megan James. She... Mm -hmm hopped on board with my cocktail making class mm -hmm. and was a sponsor by now it's it's past she was mm -hmm. a sponsor for the cocktail making class we made oh, some sweet. amazingly tasty tequila drinks and mm -hmm. so if you guys see me doing a pop-up event make sure you check it out because it's gonna be fun mm -hmm. okay so on that note i guess we'll move on to weird sex you said a man is not a necessity a man is a luxury like dessert <laughs> yeah Man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Um, this one is an update. I think I gave you guys this update, but like 50 people sent it to me. The crazy woman spitting. Spitting. Uh, in court. I think she spit and she had like headlocked her attorney. Taylor Shabusiness is her name. And originally she was like the female Jeff Jeffrey Dahmer to her boyfriend, yes. put his head in the crock pot and all that other stuff. She got life in prison. I just wanted to let you know, you you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Why the fuck would you do that to somebody? Stay away from drugs. They're bad. Okay. And... Stop attacking people in court. You did all of this to get high. And how long did the high last? It doesn't even matter. It's just crazy. But just to update y'all on that case, her ass is is staying in, in jail for the rest, well, prison for the rest of her life where she deserves to be. But y'all keep sending me updates on these little sexy, well, not sexy, sexual <laughs> criminal. Mm, she ain't sexy. She crazy. is yeah, real crazy. Like, I wonder if she's going to end up having like a Netflix story or something on her sometimes i see these people and i'm like it's gonna be on netflix did you see that there's a tiktok cult 
No. And they have a documentary coming out on Netflix sometime later this month. I'll have to send it to you. What Mallory sent it to me. What's the synop- like, What are they doing? So basically, um, what I saw from the trailer is there are these people who it's masqueraded as an agency, like a social media agency, an influencer agency um, that is getting different influencers to be a part of their thing and they work for this company, but really they're recruiting people to a damn cult. I don't know all the details because the documentary isn't out, but I'm very interested. Oh, I'm I'm interested in that. Have you have you watched that one documentary on Netflix about the schools that Pete's? Uh, I can't remember the those name. bad kid schools. The bad kid schools, but they were abusing the yes. kids, and the parents were like just basically sh- like take them, take this, mm-hmm. take the child. And I was looking at the parents like y'all deserve to go to jail because. I- this is wild. It was Even how wild. they would come and get the kids in the middle of the night and just like scoop them up. like Cover their hit. heads and throw them in the... Your child is traumatized. And the parents really didn't care. I, I One of my girlfriends had hit me up and was like... We, I can't remember what we were talking about. And she was like, hey, this is really random. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Have you watched this documentary on Netflix? And I can't remember the name of it, but it's the one where they put the take the bad kids and put them in the school and keep them there for like years. Mm-hmm. Unless they turn 18 and they have to release them. They can't talk to their family. They can't do anything. Anyway, she was like, do you remember that one night when I was telling y'all that I had went to like this boot camp school? She's like, I didn't go into details, but she was like, that's the school that my parents sent me to. And she was what? like, I didn't go to the one in Jamaica. I mean, in the States, they sent me to the one in Jamaica. Jamaica? Because they had them all around the world. I think there was one in Peru. Uh-huh. There was one, But she was like, I went to the one in Jamaica. And I was like, if you went to one of the ones out of the country, you were really getting abused. She, so she was there. what did she do for That's her what parents? I asked. Because I wanted to, when I was watching that documentary, I was like, well, how bad were they? Right. <laughs> like, what are what you, you doing to what, where somebody ch- got to take you away? Exactly. And I was like, because you know, sometimes you joke and you'd be like, if I, if my kids is acting, I'm sending you to Iraq. Like, you, But you wouldn't really do that <laughs> unless you try, you murdering little dog, the dogs and the, you acting. Well, up. now that's. I yeah. might have to send you off too. And so I was like, well, what? I said, I don't want, sh- that's sad. And I, mm-hmm. that's If you wrong. don't want to talk about it, you don't want to talk about it. But yeah. what you do? I was like, what exactly, like how bad were you that your parents sent you? Like, were you doing like abnormally bad, heinous crimes as a kid? Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, you tell me. And she was like, I mean, I did smoke weed and I would sneak out of the house. And she said, and I smoked cigarettes. And, but she was like, it was like, I was, no. She was like, now that I'm an adult and I have my own kids, it did not warrant me getting kidnapped from school and shipped away for 18 months. And, That's why. And, and, and I was like, did you ever like talk to your parents about it? She was like, now that the documentary came out, like I, she's like, I can't even bring up the conversation. They, they still don't think it was that bad. And I was like, see, this was like, see, it that was would make me not want to talk to my parents anymore, especially if I did try to bring it up and they shut me down. It's like, I'm going to have to draw a line in the sand because that's traumatizing. That's tra- Yeah. She was like, I'm still like dealing with some of the stuff that like happened to me in that school. I was like, that is who is so, I saw Paris Hilton was talking about that. She what got sent to it? I think so, or something like that. She got sent to a school like that, or something happened when she was bad. Now, she was bad from what we saw, but again, doing drugs and cutting up and stuff, it's like, are you murdering the family pets? Are you murdering other people? I just feel like that's, what could anybody do to warrant that? And if you are doing something so bad, then you need to go to to a juvenile center, not this school situation anyway she was like raising awareness for a while about it and i think that they included her in some of that but um i don't know the name of the school or any of that but yeah that is wild i mean i love a good documentary just learning about all these crazy things i love a good cult one because i'm just fascinated by cults there's like a series on hulu and i watched one um they had an episode and there were a lot of people here Mm -hmm. i can't remember the name of it but it was like they were they were having children work, right? Essentially slavery um, in the modern day, right here in Atlanta and other parts of the U.S. And they were working in these places. I can't remember what the name of it is, but it was like, like imagine like an American deli, like that kind of restaurant type spot. And they were in these strip malls all over the place and they had kids working there. They And they weren't paying them. Their parents would ship them off. Um, they had Were they American kids? Mm-hmm. Wow. Their parents would send them off thinking it's like some sort of religious boarding school, but they're working these places. They're not getting paid. They don't really get to communicate with their family. It was very weird. The girls were getting sold off to different men. Um, 
it was just the craziest case of human trafficking in the sexual way and in the worker's way that I have seen that felt so close to home because it, it was happening right here. Now, I don't know the years or any of that. I'll have to find it um, and I'll share it somewhere online. But it was really interesting. I just love the cult stories. I hate that they happen, but I love learning about them. And it always makes me wonder, how do you get caught up in this? Remember we was talking about it a few episodes ago. How mm -hmm. do you get caught up? In a cult. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, first of all, the leaders are obviously very charismatic. And then I think that sometimes people are feeling lost and they want to feel belong. They want to feel a sense of belonging to something, to somebody. They are searching for friendship. They're searching for hope. And I just hate when people fall into cults. If you cult -like have fell into a cult and you got out of it, I would love to hear from you because mm -hmm. we got questions. Yeah, let us know. We would love to talk to somebody who's been in a cult. Yeah. That might have to be a two-part episode because we're going to have questions on questions on questions. And then we need you to bring some of your friends that might still be in the cult. Sneak them away. We'll bring them in here. You know, blur And make sure y'all not being followed yeah, because- we don't need no, I don't need nothing problems because you follow me home. You going to get- Gosh. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's going to be a bad poop. day. I'm mm -hmm. telling you right now. Exactly. All right. Well, that's it for Weird Sex and um, the updates on our obsessions with documentaries and cults. Make sure if you see something crazy going on out there or if you have your own weird sex encounter, send it to us. Uh, you can DM it or email it. If you ask me, nothing stinks more than somebody on the plane who forgot to put deodorant on, or maybe you chose not to put deodorant mm, on, mm, and mm, now mm -hmm. we are locked in this fuselage. That is, <laughs> that is metal. We are trapped. We can't open a window. We can't, we can't get fresh air. And you came on here with your funky self, and now we all have to suffer because you didn't want to put deodorant on. Mm, mm, mm. That's why it, it's offensive. But that's why I'm really happy that Lumi whole body deodorant was created by an OBGYN. So you can put it anywhere, ladies. But also there's lotions, all types of different products. It lasts you. It'll hold you down for 72 hours. Ain't no flight 72 hours. Ain't no right. reason for you to be on the plane smelling like y'all be smelling. It really isn't. I cannot stand that either. It's just like... It's rude. It is rude. And I get it sometimes. Thank God it's never happened to me. But what if you get a flight delay or you got caught in the rain before you came inside? You just never know what could have happened. But if mm -hmm. you have your Lumi wipes, which I love, or the whole body deodorant, the stick deodorant, anything, you can run to the restroom really quick and freshen up. I just, I love Lumi and I don't know how I would live without it. And by freshen up, it's like you, it almost feels like you took a little hoe bath real quick. Mm -hmm. Not a whole deep, you know, soak in the bathtub, but you got a little hoe bath. You smell fresh and powdery. Mm -hmm. Or whatever scent you choose because they have so many wonderful scents. Thank I you. want you guys to try out Lumi Deodorant. They have so many different products. If you go to their website, it's lumideodorant.com. They just have so many good things. So as a special offer for our listeners, new customers will get 15% off of all Lumi products with our exclusive code cocktails. That's C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. Um, and if you combine 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, which comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and then two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash, which is perfect for travel, or the, the wipes that I'm always talking about, that's perfect for travel, keep them in your car, keep them in your purse, wherever, it doesn't matter. It comes with all of that stuff. If you combine our code, cocktails and the starter pack, then that's going to equate to about 40% off. And you know, mm -hmm. we love a deal. Um, so go ahead and make your first purchase at lumideodorant.com today and use code cocktails. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com, lumideodorant.com. And now we'll get back to the show. Are you ready for the Unleashed Tour, where shamelessness, sexiness, and laughter collide in a hilarious orgy of fun, discovery, and sex edutainment? Embark on a captivating nationwide journey with the Shameless Sex Podcast and an electrifying ensemble of sex educators and sex-positive entertainers as they bring you an unforgettably titillating live experience. Be a part of mesmerizing, entertaining, boundary-pushing acts, Shameless Sex Style. Ever heard of the Slurpee Stick Shift? 
Want to learn how to bury your face in her? How about some dirty talk improv or brat taming 101? Hmm. Get ready for nonstop laughter as our charismatic hosts and entertainers weave humor into the fabric of this liberating celebration of sexual diversity and freedom. Engage in interactive segments, Q&A sessions, and a chance to connect with like-minded individuals in an inclusive and empowering environment. Listen up, Portland, Chicago, Seattle, we're coming to you. For more information and to get your tickets right now, go to shamelesssex.com and be part of a night that will be fun, educational, sexy, hilarious, and shamelessly unforgettable. Seats are filling up fast, so don't miss out on the most unforgettable show of the year. Speaking of weird shit, Mm -hmm. have you watched this show on Netflix? It's called Baby Reindeer. Yes. Okay, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm towards the end. Bitch. At first, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? But it's like one of those, what the fuck am I watching? You got to keep watching it. That you keep your eyes glued to the screen on. And then you're like, who made this? And then you look up who made it, and it's like, oh, the actor made this. This is his true story. And then when you Mm -hmm. get to the end, sorry if you haven't watched it yet, you're thinking of watching it. The whole point of the show is basically like the Me Too movement, but a man's point of view. I, it was so sad. Did you see the interview that she did with, I think it was Pierce Morgan, the real woman? No. Martha? The real Martha? Or, okay, no, 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 no. I'm going to have to send it to you. I'm pretty sure I saved it on Instagram, but there's clips. I'll send it to you. But she came out, obviously, to me. Not a professional, but the woman is mentally ill, right? Definitely. I feel like many other people online who said that they felt like Piers Morgan um, just exploited the woman. She's obviously not well. And you had her come on this show. And so she's talking about suing the man. I forget the man's name. Richard back. something. Yeah. Talking about suing him says that uh, it's not true. She didn't send all of these emails. She didn't do all this stuff. She wasn't harassing him. It's totally not true. Blah, 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 blah. Then she tried to say that the actress didn't really resemble her. And it's like, girl. Did she? Yes. <laughs> That actress played the fuck out of that role and she better get all of the awards. Like mannerisms, everything, she had it down. I don't know what her process was to study it. I don't know if the real woman has videos online or what. But the whole reason, now I know that the actor was like, oh, please don't go find this woman and harass her. And of course people did because that's how it goes. But they found her. But the reason that they were able to find her is because her old tweets and she had been tweeting him. Crazy stuff? That yes. bitch was crazy. Yes, tweeting him crazy stuff. And so Piers Morgan had brought up some of that stuff and had brought up the emails and all of this. She denied the emails and then she was saying some of the tweets were a joke. And it was just crazy to watch because it's like, wow, you are really far gone. Mm-hmm. And I wonder who, if anyone, you actually have in your real life. Do those people try to get you help? Do they think you're okay? What's going on? I always wonder that about the people around somebody like that. Because you could have somebody where they do have people who are trying to get you help, but you don't accept it. Yeah, and you can only do that for so long. Like, I yeah, think about, you can only do so much. Yeah, I think about some of the, men, the diagnosed mentally ill people in my family. And it's like everyone has tried to help you. Like, everybody still has their own lives. Sorry if this sounds insensitive, but you can only help for so long. And at some point, you're like... I guess it's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you, and you can't help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. Mm-hmm. And if if you can't, who wants that responsibility? That's just the reality of it. Anyway, she did an interview. The show is wild and crazy. I'm not finished with it either, but I saw those clips and I was just like, this actress, that's what I kept thinking. This actress did her shit with this one. She did her big one because... Yeah. It was there. It was wild. Watch it's, it if y'all haven't watched it yeah, yet. And it's good. stick it out. Because at first you are like, what the, what the fuck is going on? I did fall asleep like three times at first. But just watch it in the beginning of the day. And by the end of the night, it's like, damn, I don't spend the whole day watching this. Mm-hmm. It's a wild ride. All right, y'all. We will jump into some of our topics and discussions for this week. Um, last week when we had Lamont White um, on the show, we kind of a little bit touched on leadership and controlling and how sometimes women might feel like, dang, like if I let this man lead me or when you hear the word submit, you you instantly get like tense, like, oh, fuck the word submit. And it's like, I I don't think people should be feeling like that, but some people do. And so I wanted to talk to you about in a relationship or if you're dating somebody, Mm -hmm. heterosexual relationship, controlling versus leadership. 
Mm -hmm. How do you tell the difference? Have you ever experienced a controlling person and a leader, like someone who is an actual good leader? You're not, you're not offended by this. Yeah, um, I've experienced both. I would say control. The big difference is, do you ever listen to me? Um, and not that it has to go my way when you listen, but do you make it a safe space for me to tell you what I think about something and whether you decide to do what I want to be done or you make a different decision or whatever, does that ever even happen? I think in controlling situations, people make you feel like you can't express yourself. Um, and so I think that's the main thing. And then with leadership, something that I um, I guess I like, and it makes me feel comfortable to submit to somebody and allow them to lead is if I just feel like they make good decisions already um, with or without my input. I don't think that you always need another person's input to make a good decision as a leader. You can consider things for whoever you're leading, but you don't always have to have that conversation. Have the conversation if the person has something to say, but whether they do or don't, are you making a decision that is good for the both of us? Or are you making a decision that's only good for you? Mm -hmm. um, what is your decision making pattern? Do these usually yield good results? Like, mm -hmm. are you thoughtful in your decisions or are you very erratic? Is there any reason behind the things that you do or do you just do it because that's what you feel like? Mm -hmm. um, I think that when you do have reasoning behind things and you do think about things and not make rash decisions. I trust a person to lead me in those instances. What do you think the difference is? I, before I answer, I think, because sometimes I think when you talk about stuff like this, giving examples helps people understand, like, have I ever been in this? A good example of it is like, let's say you're married or you live with somebody or you're in a, a serious relationship with someone and you guys live in Atlanta. One of y'all gets a, because con controlling and leadership can be for a man or a woman. There yeah. are men that are controlling. There's women that are controlling. You don't listen to nobody. You you will die on top of the hill. You don't, you don't care what he likes and what he don't like and vice versa. But let's say like y'all live together. Y'all are in love. You're talking about marriage. You live in Atlanta. Y'all said y'all were going to stay in Atlanta, raise kids. Somebody gets a promotion in their job and you have to move to mm, Michigan. And it's like a, it's an amount of money that is worth it, but you still need to discuss it with your partner. You can't, you're, to me, controlling is like, I got a promotion. We got to leave at the end of the week we're, and we're going, period. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you feel about Michigan. I don't care how you feel about anything. I don't care if this affects the kids, if y'all got kids. I don't care if you don't want to go. We're moving to Michigan as opposed to you sit down and you talk to them like, I got a promotion at work. They want me to move to Michigan. This is the pay raise. This is what we would be doing. This is what. This is how it will work. This, yeah, this is my move. plan. How do you feel about this? How would this affect you? Mm -hmm. How would you like to move forward? And then you talk about it from there. And then we either move to Michigan or we don't move to Michigan. I'm not moving to Michigan. <laughs> um, <laughs> but example, like you're mm -hmm. not just like, this is what the fuck we're doing. And I think uh, when people move like that, it's selfish and you probably need to, to not, to not be moving like that. But, um, I think that a good way to determine if somebody is controlling or like a good leader, I've too have experienced both is when you're controlling, you're only looking out for you. You're only doing what's best for you. You're not, this is not for the team. You don't give a fuck about the team. You're just like, it's like a, you're power hungry. You don't care about like anything else but just having the power. Mm -hmm. And I think that a true powerful person understands that it takes, um, you have to listen to others. You have to listen to others. Mm -hmm. It's like, you, you want to hear the feedback. How do y'all feel about this? How do we feel about it? And you you go, you you consider it, you think about it, and you are just like a level-headed person mm -hmm. to understand how things affect other people, how they affect you. You know how to communicate it. And you can be gentle where, where gentleness needs to happen, but I don't think that leadership happens with just one person. I love when I see couples um, that, you know, they're like, well, I gotta ask, I, gotta, I need to check with my wife, or the wife is like, I need to check with my husband. You're not just like making all these plans without like double checking with the person that you don't know how this might affect them. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. Like, I appreciate seeing things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know though, but, the, but 
you know, I'm not even gonna say that because that's gonna negate everything I said. I like <laughs> control in the bedroom, but you got <laughs> well, that's get. different than like life decisions, you know? Yeah, like I think it's important to want to hear your person out. Mm-hmm. I agree. Do you think that you're controlling? Um, it depends. I don't. I'll say this: I don't like to have to take control of stuff. I actually prefer when I'm dating someone, I want the man to be the leader. I want him to be making decisions. Um, I'll do it if I have to. And usually it doesn't work out well for me because then I have an attitude (laughs) and that just doesn't pan out well because I'm going to start to make the decisions when I don't trust that you can, because you either don't make good decisions, you don't make a decision or you take too long to make a decision. Like it's just bad decision-making skills. And so I understand that every man is not going to be a good leader or a good decision maker, uh, but I don't like it. Mm. Um, But typically, (sighs) what am I controlling? (laughs) I'm controlling about the food. That's about it. Everything Mm. else I can let stuff ride, but I I will speak up and I will voice my concern. That's something that I'm not afraid to do. I haven't always been that way, but I will speak up when I don't like how something is going or if I don't understand something, I'm going to speak up about that too. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever like, and I guess this would need to, I don't know if this would need to be like a serious relationship. I'm going to assume it would because I can't imagine somebody saying this if it ain't. But have you ever been like dating someone and they tell you that you you know you don't listen and you're not giving them a chance that to I don't listen. Yeah, like and you, and you don't give them a chance to even test out the leading. Mm, yeah, somebody has told me that before. Um I disagreed, but I listened. I didn't disagree out loud, but in my mind I was like, I don't really see it that way. I think that we're looking at the same situation two very different ways, but I heard him out. Mm-hmm. And um I made some adjustments to see what would be different? Um, I found that nothing was different. So that situation didn't work out. And I did everything that he asked of me. Um, the areas where he said he felt like I wasn't listening or he felt like I wasn't doing certain things and I need to take a step back. I did it. And it was just like, mm, this doesn't really work for me. And so instead of trying to force something, it ended. And I think sometimes you have to do that, too, because what I found in that specific situation, it wasn't that I didn't listen. It was that I didn't agree with him every time. Mm -hmm. And listening and agreeing to me are two different things. I can listen to you and hear you out, but that doesn't mean that I don't get to have an opinion about something. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not that his way was always wrong, but I wanted to share what I thought and not just shut up about something because maybe he didn't consider what I'm considering. It's like we're looking at the same situation and we have two different views on it. You want me to just agree with what you say, but I don't think you're considering this, so why do I have to shut up? That doesn't really work for me. And um, I found that that was really what it boiled down to with that particular person. He just wanted me to agree with him on things and not really consider me. And I felt like that was controlling and that's something that I don't want to be a part of. I can't be a part of, it's not gonna work. Mm. Um, yeah, incompatible. <laughs> have you have you been in a situation where somebody told you that you don't listen? My boyfriend, he recently told me that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> it was something that we, oh yeah, this was a, this was a moment. And, and did I, you agree? So I was so happy that it happened when it happened because um, we had a therapy session coming up, and I was mm. like, I I was like, oh, we're gonna talk about this. this yeah, I didn't say that, but I brought it up when we had the session, just because sometimes I need to know: is this normal? Like, mm. is this normal? Y'all hear me talk about my relationship a lot, and just me and the growth a lot, and I be needed. I'm a Libra. <laughs> I be need shit to be balanced. Like sometimes I'm like, okay. Is do stuff be normal? Like, is this what is should this be happening? Is this controlling? Is this leadership? So we had um a situation where he got in my car. I was taking him somewhere to for to take one of his cars to get repainted. And he was like, Can you take me to drop follow me and then wait for wait and then we'll ride back together? I was like, Yeah, no problem. So we we get up early in the morning and we go, I follow him, and then he gets in my car. We're driving. I'm already having just like a 
stressed out week for real, month, if you will. It's just a lot going on. And so we're driving, he gets in the driver's seat and we're driving home and he's like, he tells me my car is messy. And he has said it like- So clean it. <laughs> That's not what I said, but- But I mean, I, uh, you could help me out here. Maybe I'm stressed out and this is why my car looks like this. Mm -hmm. That's not what I said, but uh -oh. but he was he had said like, and he didn't get in the car and be like, this shit is me. Like it wasn't nothing outrageous. He was just like, oh, he was like, the car is messy and you really, it, it, it shouldn't be looking like this. Like when your car, he went into like all these reasons on like when your car is messy, like this, you're, this is probably why you're stressed. And, this, and he did all these things. And I was just looking at him like- <sighs> Cause I'm about to punch you in the side of your head. I agree. <laughs> and I was like, I know exactly what you mean. I said, you know what? I don't need to hear this right now. I, I just really don't need it. I don't care that you think that my car is dirty. Like this is one of the things I don't care about. And I really want you to be quiet. And I said it just like that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more rude, but nobody was hollering. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And I was just like, this and this is my car. Like, it's my car. I let mm -hmm. your vehicle look how your vehicle looks. All three of them. And I let, he's way more organized than me. And I let some of the things go because it's like, dang, just like when we were talking to Lamont, like, and I was like, does he fold the towels better? Mm -hmm. Are you able to take the back seat on that one? Or you just want to argue just to prove a point? Right. I'm kind of past that. I'm not, unless it's something I need to stand on. My car mm -hmm. is something I need to stand on. Because that's yours. It's mine. And I pay for it for anybody who's going to get in the comments and say something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so... So then he was just like, um, he said something rude. Like we were, it was just a heated moment. Like, so it was like, did he say that you're annoying? I think he said something like you're annoying. And I was just like, oh, I'm just going to be quiet. Are we quiet. about to go tit for tat? <laughs> and I'm which trying, way is it going to go? Which way is it going to go? Which way is this going to go? Am I going to be the better person or am I going to be the worst person? And I was like, I'm going to be the better person today because I was just exhausted. Like. I've been doing a lot of studying. I got class every day from 6 to 10 p.m. I'm <laughs> learning about Georgia law, national law, fucking encroachments. I don't give a fuck about what you talk about right now. My like car. Messy car. Like, it's just, it was just a lot. So I, was, I let him say that I was annoying. And my silent treatment, I don't care how much therapy I go through. That's always going to be my, my, my weapon because I can do it. I'm not proud of it, but I am good at it. I just got quiet when he said it. I was like, because I know how, you know how you know how you can get and you're trying to be a change person. Mm -hmm. So I just got quiet. Mm -hmm. And we were driving home and I was real quiet. And he was like, I could feel him like scared a little. We get home mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, like, I, I just want to talk. And I was like, what, what could you possibly, you know, want to talk to me about? So we have this conversation. I'm proud of myself because it was a calm conversation. He said, um, do you see like the validity in what I was saying about a car being being clean and how you could have a clean a more clear train of thought if you clean up your vehicle? And I was like, we're not even going to start there. <laughs> we're we can't start there because do you realize where you went wrong? I was like, this is my vehicle. At the end of the day, I pay for it. My insurance, everything that has to do with my car, I handle that. And that's okay for me. It's like I, the way that it's my car, yours. yeah. I was like, the way that my car is, I'm fine with how it is right now because when, I never let my car get super junky. Where some bitches have really nasty cars. It's ants. It's trash. It's not mm -hmm. like that. It's just a bunch of mess that is my mess that is a organized disaster for me, and it works out for me. You're rarely in my vehicle, and so I was telling him how I felt, how this is just not. It's not okay the way that it was handled. So. We have our therapy session. I tell the therapist about it. And I was like, I feel like it it was controlling. And this isn't like, because he said he felt disrespected that I didn't listen to him and just clean up the car. And mind you, I'm sharing this story not to have feedback from y'all. I don't, I, I feel like now we have to say stuff like this because people really get, sometimes I'll share things because. And they still go do it. And they still going to do it. But I just am going to say this right now. In that case this you is, was wondering. Yeah, this is not a niggas ain't shit. This is me having normal problems in a relationship with my man who I still very much love and nothing is perfect and we work through issues. And to work through issues, you have to have some issues come up and you talk them out and everyone has things they need to work on. So I don't need y'all in my DMs. Sometimes when I say things, people get in my DMs and they're like, I think that, and they're giving Shut me up. stink pieces <laughs> about what I'm weak and I need to stand up for myself. And, and it's like, I, that's not this type of thing. It's just a situation that so happened. overwhelming and annoying. It'd be <laughs> overwhelming and annoying, but it's like, dang, I really got to sit here and talk about this or 
we won't talk about relationships. <laughs> so, um, y'all will get a catch up the whole entire episode. Anyways, we have the the conversation with my therapist and I told her exactly what happened. I love my therapist, our couples therapist. And he says how he felt. I said how I felt. And I was like, am I supposed to like as a woman or as a girlfriend, as a wife, like a situation like this, is this something that like I'm supposed to ba like bow down to and not stand on? And like, this is my car. And she was like, well, is it more than the car? Like, is it, does it have to do with more than the car? A valid question. It, it was a valid question. And she was like, I really want you to think. She was like, because y'all have to learn how to, when you have a disagreement, try to dig deeper and figure out if this is something, if it's really about the car being messy and him bringing it up, because this shouldn't have been a week long argument. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have felt like you had to stand on this for the whole week. Like, uh -huh. and so I was like, well, yeah, maybe I just feel like I, I, you're critiquing me too much. Like, it's like, I'm already stressed. I'm doing all this stuff. And then this is what you're going to say when I'm following you to, so you can have a ride back from getting your car painted, nigga. Mm -hmm. And I get in your car and it'd be sometimes messy and I let you live your life. Like, let me live. And then you're saying it's disrespectful because I didn't listen to you. I'm not going to listen to that. And and it was just like a whole, I don't have a full round circle for y'all, but it was a thing <laughs> where it's like, he realized that the therapist was like, what are you talking about with leadership? This isn't mm -hmm. a moment of leadership. And then she was like, do y'all see like the, do you see what he's saying? Or do you think this could be a positive thing? And I was like, I do. Now I do. Like we're removed from the situation. I thought about it. The car should be clean, but it's going to be clean on my terms. Mm -hmm. It was just a lot going on. I was like. I get that. I don't, I don't like when it's a situation like that. Okay. You're telling me that my car, if my car is clean, it's going to give me a clear and happy space. Right. But guess what? I'm not in a clear and happy space. So again, what you going to do to help the situation? I had a similar situation last year with someone and I got really frustrated because an issue that I was having with this guy was he said that, um, I don't know how to ask for help. That is a weakness of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of it. It was something I was working through. But what really boils my blood is whenever I do work on these things and a person who likes to call out my issues doesn't want to be a part of the solution. You just want to keep telling me where I'm wrong. Like, mm -hmm. what part of this are you going to do to be supportive of me making changes and stuff? You tell me I don't speak up about my issues. And so that's why things are the way that they are. But when I speak up in the most respectful way, I'm not acting crazy about it. I'm not yelling, you th yelling at you. There's no big argument. The results are still the same. Mm -hmm. So... Do you see how I can feel like I don't even want to say it because the disappointment in you not doing what I hoped that you would do is even bigger and that's a bigger stress. So situation was I kept saying I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm stressed. Sometimes I just need help with little things. When you're around, if you could just help with little things. I can't always tell you and micromanage you to do things, but it, if you're going to be around and I'm telling you this, if you see that something is out of place or it needs to be picked up, pick it up. Mm -hmm. If you see that the trash is full, you know where the trash chute is, take it out. If you see that I have a bunch of dishes in the sink and you're not doing nothing, but you wanted to be over here while I was working, open up the dishwasher unload the dishwasher. Like you could do those things. Maybe you don't want to do those household chores, but you also don't have to be here. So if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I haven't had the time to get around to my household chores. The last thing you start need to do is come over here. Damn, you still got dishes in the sink? Ooh, I'm about to throw one at your way. Because I upset. It's like, you didn't have to come. You wanted to be here. You knew that I was busy. Yeah, I still have dishes in the sink. I'm not proud of it. I'm not happy about it. I do feel stressed. I get what your man is saying about when your space is clean and clear. Mm -hmm. it, it, he's right about that. However, and he's right. However, you're not always in the space to be able to get a grasp of that. And so it's just like, as a leader, sir, who you also complain about that. As a leader, you should look, assess the situation and say, okay, let me take the reins on this. Mm -hmm. She's struggling here. Let me help her. I would do that if I was going to lead a situation with you mm -hmm. in an area where you're weak at. And when that's not happening, it's like, but you think. But it's also, it's a learning moment for the next time for it to happen. Yes. Instead of everybody going tit for tat. Because I did tell him that. He said, well, how would you want me to help in the, if this situation happens again? I said, the situation is going to happen again. It, this doesn't, this type of, you ain't seen mess. This ain't really even that messy. Mm -hmm. But if, if, it, if my vehicle bothers you that much, take my keys and go get it cleaned out. Mm -hmm. And that's how... 
it will it it will go. <laughs> amen. And, and amen. But wait, I forgot a key part of the story because I started mm. sweating and getting nervous thinking about the listeners commenting. Oh yeah. Um. So so then it, he was talking about how like it could be a, a big. It's okay. Okay. We talked. He was talking about how like it. Uh, my my boyfriend has OCD. Like extremely but he don't agree with it but he does and so he was like sometimes this was in therapy again I hope she's not listening to this she's gonna be like why is you so he was like I looked at it like the car was messy when we have kids he jumped <laughs> to and I pre it's, he I do to chapter 13 and we're in chapter three <laughs> I see a beauty in it because I love Planning it ahead. we can talk about this and you plan and you do plan ahead there's some people that don't ever do that and and he was like if the cars are messy and we don't have kids and everything's not in order and we're not hitting the standard like now, then when by the time we have kids, it's like we're going to start slipping. And it, and then it turned to this whole, I was like, is this how your mind thinks? Like, that is so stressful. And you're putting like a pressure on me that like I can't handle right now. And again, I'm just trying to pass the real estate final <laughs> and you're talking about if we have kids and this is going to be like the, the type of, and then like our therapist was telling him like, okay, we got to. We gotta calm down. We gotta calm down and take a step back. There are some fears going on here that need to be addressed, and that's doing too much. And then, I, you know, I had told him, I was like, "You're talking about preparing for kids, but you're only pinpointing my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You're not pinpointing yours." Like, my that boyfriend is. is a gun owner of many sorts. I was like, if "We look behind the bed right now. It's a gun. You can't have a gun out if there's kids. Mm -hmm. So, like, if we're gonna do this." pre-planning, we both need to be held to the standard. And I think sometimes men, let me not put it on a gender because there are different people that are like the sort of like, you're only looking at the other, the other person, person, what they need to fix. We both need to fix some shit and work on some shit before we move forward in anything. And let's remember that. Mm -hmm. Because if I have to remind you in the middle of an argument, we really gonna be mad. Yeah. Real mad. <sighs> That's another thing, like thinking about kids too, um, y'all know I'm not opposed to dating anybody who already has kids. That might be ideal for me because who wants to be pregnant? Not I. Uh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, but um, I was talking to a guy, same guy. This was another uh, situation last year. I was talking to him about kids. And he said that he's open to having more kids. And I was like, okay, what if you don't? How is that going to work? And that was fine. But then I was like, okay, you already have a kid. Now, there are some things that I've observed. Mm, that's a tough conversation. Um, that while it may work for you, child, and the child's mother, right? That can be fine for y'all. It's something I don't like. How would you feel if I said that's not okay? Like you don't like how he runs the his unit. like different situations I, I i wouldn't be okay with things going certain specific things if things went that way with me mm -hmm. if we had a kid together now y'all's kid you if if we were to end up together i gotta respect y'all's wishes because y'all are the parents i would be a step parent right but for my own kid shit will be different how do you feel about this well you don't even have kids i know i don't but i'm saying what if we did let's talk about these things well it could be different it could go this way okay but are we really sure? Are you just saying that because we're on the front side? Because do you do you really see where I'm coming from? Does it matter to you, one? Because maybe this is a situation where I'm just overthinking something, being on the outside looking in, and it's not a big deal to you, and you really would bend. But that's something I think about, too, because people love to talk about compromise and all this bending and stuff. But a lot of times I don't find that things are really... Um, situations that people compromise on, I feel like it goes one person's way or the other. Mm -hmm. There is somebody has to bend, concede, or shut the fuck up. And I couldn't imagine anything where I would feel that way with my own kid, whether I birthed them, adopted them, whatever. And then I got to thinking, I was like, well, you know, um, I don't know how you're going to feel about this, but um, since we're talking Wait, about me it. me or him? Him. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know how you're going to feel about this, but since we're talking about it, I would think things need to go different too with this kid you already got 
And I felt like, you know, ooh, I might but be stepping those over the line. But those conversations that be that need to happen. That's why I say, like, when people when people hear this and it's like, well, this is good. No, these are things that need to be stirred up so and you spot, have an idea of what you're getting into. Exactly. And it's like, okay, well, I could shut up because it's not my kid. But if we were to be together, get married, mm -hmm. whatever, this kid is now my stepchild and I'm involved and... I still have my own opinions. I could not be with you and your child from this previous situation if I can't say anything. Not saying that what I say have to has to go, but I do have concerns. There are some things that I would like to happen a little bit different. Um, how you feel about that? And so I was kind of nervous to say that because I wasn't sure what he was gonna say. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know what the end result would be. <laughs> we didn't get married or nothing. But I did voice it. He he was like, mm. some stuff he was open to what I had to say, but I could tell he was offended. But in the end, it's like, mm, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but these are things that matter to me. And I think that things like that, that could end up being deal breakers and that are real concerns, you got to speak up on it. Even when it's an uncomfortable conversation, mm -hmm. somebody's feelings might get hurt. I definitely try my best to be as respectful in the process as I could. Mm -hmm. um, so it was no disrespect, but I could tell like it bothered him that I said some things, but I, I just had to speak up. And it's okay that it bothered him. One Another thing that a technique that my therapist gave us to, when we need to have uncomfortable conversations, she was like, it takes a minute to grow to get to, a, you can have the uncomfortable conversation conversations and nobody's crying or it turns into an argument. She was like, a really good technique to consider and to try is to sit down back to back so that you and say the things like mm -hmm. give him his moment. If he needs to have the moment to say what he needs to say, some of the things he don't like about you and some of the concerns, not necessarily I don't like them about you, concerns you might have. Mm -hmm. You might be paying attention to how someone's spending or something that they're lacking in or you're worried about this and the, this being a problem in the future. And when you have that conversation face to face, I might roll my eyes or, or now you feel like you feel like you have to be um, responsible for my response to what you're telling me when really you don't. But I'm going to have a response mm -hmm. and you can have a better response if you're not looking at each other, giving each other that energy. So you still sit back to back and just listen and you just listen. You don't know what he's looking like when he's saying it. He don't know what you're looking like when you're receiving it. And she was like, just try it. She was like, I tell people to try this all the time. And it's so much easier to get things off of your chest. Mm. Another thing, like when you were talking about um, just how people live, I, I pay attention to habits. And I always have. My habits, their habits, how you affect somebody else when you're in their life with your habits and vice versa. And like, it made me wonder, like, do you think you're a good habit for someone when you think about creating a life with them? If you have, like them coming into your life, is that a good habit? I could think about plenty of situations where there's men that I've dated that had very bad habits. Y'all heard some <laughs> of the stories on the show. Okay. And I got wrapped up into a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, wow, who you decide to spend your time with in a romantic way really can change the whole trajectory of your life. Mm -hmm. Especially if you find that you're the one who ends up going along with their life versus somebody going along with yours. Um, and it can be a good thing. It can be a positive thing mm -hmm. or it could be a negative thing. Yeah. It's just so many different things can happen. I've definitely been with some people where I felt like I'm glad it didn't work out because this was going to end up with me in rehab. Um, and then other people, it's like, dang, I wish I could have been better. <laughs> I might be doing better. I don't know. I might have been making better decisions and skipped a few phases of my life, you know. And so you just take all of those lessons. And I know I continue to try to apply different things and just think about, okay, every time somebody hits me up or a flashback from the past comes, I say, let me take this moment not to respond, but just to assess where was I at in that point in my life? Is any part of that still here? Let's work on that. Maybe mm -hmm. this is the sign. Don't respond, but this is a sign. You still got some fixing to do, and it was everything that was going on then. Um, I hope you guys reflect and I hope that you try the back to back situation. I might try that next time. I'm in a little kerfunkle with a man um, and see how that might work out for me. We're going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we will answer some of your advice questions. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? 
It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey ladies, it's me, Diane. And listen up, I know a lot of people don't really want to go to cold places, but Iceland is so different. It's sexy. There's the Blue Lagoon. Go ahead and book right now. Save your spot. Put your down payment down at paradiseandvibe.com. Tell them Medina sent you because she's hosting the trip. <laughs> it's going to be such a good time. Bring your babe. Bring your girls. Come alone. Bye, ladies. back from indecisive diane and it is time for the advice if you have a question that you would like to ask us on the show please email us advice at cocktailspod.com before i read the advice one mm -hmm. more thing that i thought of with that whole situation and the therapy and stuff mm -hmm. when he, when bay was like he had told me that the car was messy and again he didn't say it in a rude way he just said it and i was mm -hmm. mad and he said you know sometimes i feel like and he's like i've been feeling like a lot of men feel this way with women and he was like Sometimes it, you get to take up all of the emotional space. <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, oh, it made wow. me feel bad. It made mm. me feel like, he was like, women get to, get, y'all get to be emotional sometimes for no reason. And you, and you can just say what it is. And like, I have to listen to that. And if I had a response all the time, you wouldn't like it. And mm -hmm. it really made me sit there and think like, he was like, I just need a little bit of space. I don't even need a lot. Just like a little bit. And I was like. I feel him because I have felt like him before. Like, damn, nigga, you take up all the space. Like, I don't never get to talk about an issue because yours are always so much bigger than mine. Now I'd be feeling bad if I bring it up because you said it first. But it's like, God damn, you beat me to the punch every fucking day. Mm -hmm. Be happy, nigga. Damn, pretend. Mm -hmm. Can I have Tuesdays or something? <laughs> Shit. But yeah. Think about like, that if maybe you find that you are the one who voices their opinion the most. Maybe dial back and see. Not necessarily dial back, Not but you got to let the time. them. Give them a day. Do you do it every day? Take a day off. <laughs> yeah, take a day off if you can, but mm -hmm. you got to share some of the plate. <laughs> okay. This one is titled Becoming, I spell coming with a U, more open. Hey, ladies, huge fan from Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh has been coming up a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been listening since the beginning of COVID. I love you both and have been putting my friends onto your podcast. I'm a 2025, oh, I'm a 2025 bride and would love to attend a show with the girlies if y'all can make your way to Pittsburgh. We'll be sure to show up and show out. Okay, let's get to it. I love giving my fiance head, but I told him I'm not swallowing until our wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> this was a running joke as we have dated for years but now i'm almost to the finish line so i'm holding out sometimes it's a little awkward when he comes i'm giving him toe curling deep moaning squirming head but when he's coming i either jerk him off or let him do it himself i um any recommendations on how to keep it sexy also i'm curious to know shout out if either of y'all swallow in your current relationships or situationships it, signed becky the bride p.s medina i ordered okay i ordered my man a penis pump after you mentioned your boyfriend liking it <laughs> we used it for the first time the other night and that thing sucked his balls right up and had him screaming Ooh. we <laughs> Okay, bath mate. <laughs> we smoked a little before we started, and my high ass couldn't stop laughing. Do y'all really use it? Thanks for reading it <laughs> from my iPhone. Yes, I really used it. I don't use it frequently, and I wasn't on drugs when I did it. I don't know if y'all <laughs> got more, like, you did a little bit too much because you was high and unaware, but yes, try it again and don't be high. And do it in the shower. Remember I said the shower. And so she wants to know how to make it sexy with, without Her not swallowing. swallowing. I don't swallow. Um, I used to. I retired from that many moons ago. Um, I think it can still be sexy. You don't have to swallow. Let him, if you're okay with it, um, let him just nut somewhere on you. Like, I think a really easy one is your titties. Because it's, it's right there below your mouth. It doesn't have to get in your face. Pull that hair back and just let him do it there. You could even rub it in. Because mm -hmm. um, I understand if you don't want it in your mouth, you probably don't want it on your face and you definitely don't want it in your eyeballs or nothing like that. But I think on your titties or even on your stomach, um, 
if you can move real quick and hop around and let them shoot on the ass, I mean, you could do that too, but that might be too much. I think the titties is a good place to do it. Um, and he'll be fine. I, if you don't want to swallow, are you okay with it being in your mouth? Because I won't swallow it, but I'll just keep going and it's just falling out oh as yeah I'm that's going. a way to do it it's really messy so prepare yourself for that but if you don't mind that part is just the goal that you don't like yeah and just do that maybe even like reach up and choke him while it's happening like do some other sexy shit like mm -hmm. i've done that too and they don't know what's going on and then sometimes do the reach up and choke right before he's about to come hop back on his dick and then just hop off if you're quick, because you might get pregnant. Quick. I was just about to say, now that sounds like shotgun wedding is coming. All right. So <laughs> good luck, girl. I hope it works out. Whenever you try, whatever you decide to try, send us a cocktail. Cocktails at cocktailspot.com. Okay. So this one says, first, I just want to say I love you guys and your content. Your personalities fit so perfectly together, and I love that you are unapologetically yourselves. Thank you. Now, I know you ladies are experienced queens in the bedroom, and I was hoping you could help me find a plaything for me and my man. Uh-oh. Mm. Challenge. I don't know if we're going to accept it. Let's see. Yeah. My man has had a threesome experience before. However, I have not. I like the fact that he's already been there, done that, because he isn't eager for it. It's just a fantasy for me that I would like to fulfill. We've already had a thorough conversation of boundaries, what's okay and what's not, and the intention of the threesome. Basically, we're just looking for a cute girl to fuck and kindly show her the door. And he has left the search to me. In a previous episode, you mentioned the Field app, which I've downloaded, but I'm hung up on what to say in my profile. Your girl doesn't know, doesn't want to sound corny or attract the wrong female. So what would you advise for someone to put in their about on the app for what we're looking for? Oh, she um, included a picture for oh, visual content. Her he doesn't like, look very familiar. I was like, are y'all I didn't look at the picture. Um, he doesn't like selfies, so this is the best I could get of him. Okay, so what should she put in the about section of her profile is her question, so that she can attract the right type of person. Okay, first of all, I don't like that it's all on you. As long as either. we've been doing this show, we have learned a lot about this stuff, and it's like, he should be... <laughs> Like he should be involved in it too. That that's what makes it more fun. Like I don't think all of the work should be on you and maybe talk to him about that so y'all can make it be a good experience and at least prepare for it. And also, I don't like that it's just like the girl is just like a throwaway girl because I think <laughs> you also need to look at it like you are bringing somebody into your relationship. Like you and your man need to court somebody and that part needs to go in your bio. Like we're looking for a girl we can wine and dine. We want to make you feel special for a special night. Like I'm no, I don't think if you don't just meet her out and y'all just have like a freaky night and that's how it ends up happening, then I don't think it should just be like, we're trying to find something that we could just like dine and dash Because you need an escort. For yeah, that. it's just You just like pay somebody if you really want it to be like no sort of connection. I definitely agree. You should wine and dine the person. It doesn't have to be like five dates, but you could go on one or two dates yeah. because you also want to peep the other person's vibe. You do. This is a human interaction you're about to have. And it's like your man is already saying, I don't want to be a part of it. I just want to show up and fuck. No, nigga. Absolutely. Not. Unless that's how he treats you and that's all you're used to. And maybe... And that's not great either. That's not romantic. You need to be trying to, even if this is not going to be a consistent thing, think about how you want to be treated as a woman. Put that in... Put that, that's what would attract me to somebody's bio. Me and my man are looking for someone we can spoil. Say what spoil means to you. Dinner, some drinks, and then we're going back home to wine and dine you some more. She's doing y'all a favor. You want the threesome. Mm -hmm. I also think... Um, I. I don't like that all the pressure is on you to find the girl, but I do also understand the hesitation that guys get because sometimes they feel like they come off like creeps because usually they do. Something that I think that y'all could do uh, together is in the About Me profile, have him write something about you. Mm. Let him describe you in the thing and then you describe him so the pressure is not on you. Describe him, he describes you, say who you are as a couple, what you want to do with this person. Don't put too many words this because then they're going to think of a relationship. You don't want the, I think being too wordy is going to give too much of a, I'm looking for a deep, deep connection. So keep it concise, but have him write a line or two about you. You write a line or two about him. Say that you would like to want and dine somebody um, and feel the vibes out. 
But be clear that you're looking for sex and yeah. not a relationship. You can say it in a nice way, but be clear in the thing so nobody thinks that you're looking for like a third to your whole relationship. And I also think it's important to put a lot of pictures. So he doesn't like selfies. You need to take some pictures of that man. Because you the picture that you photos. sent, I'm not going to lie to you. It's like... And I need you to go look at the picture. That don't okay, let me go use that it. picture. He's laid down looking like the picture what you snuck it of him. And see, no. Um, so. No, that's you cannot do that. You need to have him take a picture. And it doesn't need to look like a school picture either. Don't just be standing there. Show pictures of y'all interacting. Take pictures next time yeah. you're on a date. Yeah. Get some candidates of him. Y'all go do some activities or something. And another thing you need to remember is when you have a threesome with your man, you need to make him like the prize and he hopefully is one like he is he okay with whining and dying in the third right or is he not like yeah, don't use this picture don't use anything like that picture. it's probably a good and you need to i don't know i'm hoping that these aren't the only pictures because you said it's just for visual reference he needs to get up because another thing and i'm gonna just be honest um he looks tiny <laughs> and I don't know if that's going to be attractive to many women. Maybe he is tiny, but I'm sure he looks better standing up. Neither of you are unattractive people, I don't think. Um, you just need to stand up. Full body shots. This is for sex. So we need to be clear. Don't be trying to hide nothing because don't nobody want to get catfish in a physical interaction. Y'all should have some pictures together. And don't be looking together. too relaxed because then it's like, this is going to be Have boring. something smiling. Have something looking sexy. You need a mix of your photos, but both of y'all need more pictures and have some pictures together. And Let's remember, see the body language. This is, we're giving you this information if you want to get a quality person. If you want to get on Craigslist, and get like just get someone who might be addicted to heroin. Do what you do this, but I don't think that's what you want. You want to have a quality experience. Mm -hmm. I have had couples slide in my DMs and on different apps when I was single, and the way that they came was just so sexy and flirty that I at least met up with them for dinner. I might not have had sex when we got there. It was like, dang, you left the belly out of the picture. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But there were some people where it was like, dang, this was really actually y'all showed me a good time. Let me go ahead and drop some pussy off. We're just keep in mind what you would want. Yeah, and I also think that y'all could try outside of the apps. Y'all could try going out next time you go to dinner or go out for drinks or whatever don't get a table sit at the bar mm -hmm. so that you can look at different people and you as the woman you need to let the other girl know it's okay so you are gonna have to take more of the lead on that because if i'm sitting at the bar and i see a couple an attractive couple that i would absolutely have sex with but only the man is making eye contact with me i'm thinking he's a sneaky low down dirty black dog mm -hmm. you know and so i would feel way more comfortable <laughs> if you did it and maybe even made eye contact with me and did a little look at her or something or we want to send you a drink you could do that as a buffer Tell yes. the bartender, we want to send her a drink. Tell her we think X, Y, Z. And then she will either take the bait or just take a free drink. So be careful. Be cute with it. Mm -hmm. Add some swag on it, some flavor, some luxury, something. Yeah, something. I hope it works out. And if it does, send us another cocktail. Please. Okay, so that's it for the advice. And we will move on to the cocktails. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So if you have a cocktail, remember, you can email it to us, cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Okay, you got one, Medina? Cocktail, cocktail, yes. Okay, this one didn't have a title, so we'll just dive right in. Everyone starts these off the same, so I feel like it's only right. Hi, ladies. I love you, ladies. I Aww. met you at the live show, and you guys were so sweet and tipsy. <laughs> I'll keep this as short as a writer possibly can, considering this entire tale happened over the course of nine or 10 months. You guys should probably split this read halfway through. Mm, I didn't know she said that. Okay. <laughs> For about half a decade, I've worked as a bartender and a server at a local sports tavern in my city. If you've ever worked in the service industry, you know how close everyone becomes between late night shifts and even later night bar trips. I do. Anyway, I took a break from the job to focus on school, which was in a different city. After graduation, I called up my general manager, who's like a dad to all of us staff, for some extra hours while I figured out what direction to take my life. He told me to come into the office the next day to go over the schedule, and I was right, th and I was there on time. 
After greeting my coworkers, who I hadn't seen in months, my general manager and I went into the small office to look at the schedule. When we entered, someone was sitting in one of the two chairs. We'll call him Joe. Joe was the complete opposite of my type. I like long hair, locks, or something of the sort, and he was bald. I like chocolate <laughs> men, and he was light brown with green eyes. It was giving green-eyed bandit. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, my GM introduced him to me as our new manager. I introduced myself, and then we parted ways. I thought nothing of it after I got home. A few days later, a friend request, a friend request from Joe popped up on my Facebook. Again, I thought nothing of it because the entire staff pretty much had each other on socials. But we did just meet, so I was a little confused. As we worked together, I learned more about him. He was engaged to a white woman, and they had children. He and his fiance met at a former restaurant. We began to joke around at work here and there. One night after I got off of a late shift, I opened up my phone to a message from Joe on Facebook. Joe old sent a Facebook message. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I think I would have never got the message. I do not be on Facebook. He was inquiring about something I posted on my story, and it was obvious he wanted to start a conversation. <laughs> a conversation that didn't end for the next nine months. What y'all talking about for nine months? For nine months? months on Facebook Messenger? <laughs> How old are you, Susie? <laughs> As it always does, it started off simple, asking how work was and things of that nature. I noticed the timing of these messages anytime after 10 or 11 p.m. Did I ever tell you about that time this man was doing that to me? And I said, hey, look, I can't remember. I think his name was Cleveland or something. And I was like, Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> and he was really handsome and he kept doing stuff like Joe was doing. I don't know how this is going to end. And I one time was like, hey... You keep asking me how my day was, Stop. how it was work. He had sent me lunch a couple of times at work. And I was like, what do you want to do? Like, what is happening? He never mm. talked to me again. Well, damn. I know. <laughs> um, and I knew it was when he was alone without his fian his his finance. Does she mean to put fiance? Probably. Okay. Sounds like a typo. I could tell he just wanted to talk to someone and I didn't mind listening. Mind you, Joe and I have about a 10 year age gap. So in hindsight, it really wasn't shit to talk about or I could aid him on. Fast forward a few more months and Joe told me he found a new job and his last day would be the following week. That was quick. It was sad, <laughs> but also a relief. We celebrated his last day at our local bar. Joe is not a drinker. Throughout the night, my coworkers and I had about six to seven tequila shots each and a few seltzers. It was around two. <laughs> it was around. White Claws can get you out of there. <laughs> it was around 2 a.m. And Joe said he was leaving. And speaking of White Claws, Bay was like, when we went to the wedding. And I know y'all had White Claws. <laughs> he was like, and truly. Is this sparkling water? I was like, it's no. alcohol. And he was like, why are we Barely. drinking this? I was like, just drink it. <laughs> Oh, okay. It was around 2 a.m. and Joe said he was leaving. So I told him I'd walk him to his car. Before I could even open the car door, he was pulling me into the passenger seat and unbuttoning his pants. He expressed, he, Joe gives no fucks. He don't care if you're going to call the news, write an HR letter. He expressed he hadn't had his dick sucked in years. And oh I don't God. know about y'all, but sucking dick makes me so wet. Oh, girl, if you just heard mm. us talking, you know, it don't it make us not. wet. I'm this getting off. Chore. Yeah. <laughs> I took his rock hard dick into my hands, wrapped my mouth around it. And I swear I sent him to another world for a few moments with the way he was responding. It didn't feel like long before he was trying to take my pants take off my pants while my ass was up in the air. And we both knew we were too tall to even try to get into the back seat of his sedan. This is a woman. Is this a woman writing this? I think so. Okay. So me being Why drunk. Why are y'all in the sedan? <laughs> he has a family. Joe has a family. She doesn't have a home? Well, they're at the outside of the bar. Joe is married. Go home. She's in Get school. Room. I just feel like what? And they work at a bar. Think of all our bar managers or the one bar manager. They don't got no homes either. Mm, all right. Continue. Sorry. So me, I'm just feeling cramped up and my hip is hurting. I can't do no car, Joe. Okay. So me being drunk instructed him to bend me over the hood of his car. Oh, y'all outside with it. Mind you, this bar Her hip was cramping too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said they, they tall. Mind you, this bar parking lot is connected to a hospital parking lot off of a main street, and all the lights were on. I didn't care about the potential sex offender charge, though. Ooh. 
All I could think about was finally fit. You don't care now until you get one. And now you right. can't live next. Now you, you got to register. Now you got to register. You can't live by the school. school. You can't go to the family reunion. Everybody's asking you why you can't come. Nothing. You got to explain. You can still come to the family reunion. Cause not if it's at a park. Happened. Well, not at the park. No. You <laughs> getting in trouble. I would be the cousin that's calling. Excuse me. Uncle Leroy is here at the park. And I know he's not supposed to be here. Hmm. Hmm. All I could think about was finally feeling that dick after months and months of being teased with it. We fumbled around to the hood and my stomach was immediately on the cool head of his car. The tequila doesn't allow me to remember every detail, but I do know that shit was worth the wait. Was it worth his fiance cussing me out via Facebook Messenger three days later? Y'all don't be on Instagram? <laughs> well, hell yeah. We haven't spoke since, since, and this was about two years ago, but congrats to them on their marriage. Peace. <laughs> I love that she wasn't trying to explain herself. She's like, I fucked Joe, and that's it was worth it. And we say she, we don't know if this was a she or a he, honestly. Well, um, thank you for sending that in. That was that was a cocktail for you. That was a cocktail. Ooh, she said it was worth it too. Oh wow, and they messaged it on Facebook Messenger and getting cussed out on Facebook. You got to download two different apps to talk on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize I had Facebook Messenger on my phone until somebody was calling me on Facebook Messenger. And I said, now, see, I need to remove all of this shit because I don't know who's pop pop. This is probably an old cousin or something. I don't know. Don't call me on Facebook. Don't call me on Instagram either. Don't call me on any of the social apps. Even don't if I do know that. you, don't. Well, if I know you, it's fine. But if I haven't talked to you in the past 12 months, I don't know you anymore for you to be calling me. <laughs> it's expired. I haven't talked to you since I was 17. I don't know you anymore. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Um, anyway. Thank you guys for sending that stuff. We love it. Remember, advice goes to advice at cocktailspod.com and cocktails goes to cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Sign up for Patreon. We have so much content on there and some new things are coming your way. Patreon.com slash cocktails. And also don't remember, do not DM me or write in these comments what I need to do for my relationship. Amen to that. We were just sharing stuff and you can talk amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. We weren't writing in for advice, okay? <laughs> um, to be clear, we were just sharing experiences so that y'all can take this and talk about it with your loved ones Yours. that you know. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> follow us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Bean. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.